Thank you so much for joining us this uh, evening time. And I'm going to talk on this topic, love him, know him, and call upon him. We're going to go through Psalm chapter 91. We all know this chapter so well. It's our favorite chapter in the, in the Bible. And we're going to see only these, these few verses, the last three verses, verses 14, 15, and 16. And we're going to see what the Holy Spirit wants to teach us this evening time. And here, we're going to learn that we need to love Him, we need to know more about Him, and we need to call upon Him. So that's the desire that is there in God's heart. He wants His children to love Him. He wants His children to know more about Him. He wants His children to call upon Him daily. So here we're going to see the promises and blessings of God. Okay? In these three verses, we're going to see the promises of God. And we're going to see the blessings that God has in store for us. So let's go and check out the verse now. 
Psalm 91. Okay. And here we're going to see, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So I hope you're able to see the words that I've highlighted in red color. God is saying, he loves me. She loves me. He knows my name. She knows my name. He will call on me. She will call on me. God is expecting his children to love him. God is expecting his children to know about him, to know this name, which is all powerful, the name above all names. God wants his children to call on him. So here he says, can you see all the words that are highlighted in blue color? Those are the promises and the blessings of God. And you know what God is saying in the 14th verse, he says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Can you see the promise that God is giving? He's saying, I will rescue my child because my child loves me. And the next promise he says, I will protect him. I will protect my child because my child knows my name. And the third promise God is, God is giving, he's saying, my child will call on me and I will surely answer my child. So God is, he, he is going to rescue his child, his children, because they love him. God is going to protect his children because they know his name. God is going to answer the cry of their, of his children because they call on him. So my friends, here the Holy Spirit is reminding us this evening, do we love God? Do we have a desire to know more about him? Do we call on him every moment of our life? Of our, in our day. So God is reminding us to love him. He's reminding us to have a desire to know more about him. And he's reminding us to call on, call on him daily. And can we see the other blessings that God is mentioning here? He's saying, I will be with my child in trouble. I will deliver my child. I will honor my child. And he also says, with long life, I will satisfy my child and I will show my children my salvation. See the blessings that God has in store for, for his children who love him, children who know more about him, children who have a desire to know more about him, and to all his children who call on him. Let's go and check out the first thing. Because he loves me, I will rescue him. God is saying, because my child loves me, I'm going to rescue my child from all the struggles that my child is going through in this life. God is already mentioned in the Bible. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have problems. You will go through some struggles. But God is reminding us this evening time. He's saying, since you love me, I'm going to rescue you from all your problems. And here you see in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, we, we read, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So the Bible, it reminds us, it gives us all the commands. And here is the most important command. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, not half-heartedly, with all your heart, wholeheartedly love him. Because God loved us so much, that's the reason he sent his only begotten son. If God had not sent his only son to die on the cross for your sin and my sin, we would have perished. We, do not, we will not have any hope of eternal life. There is no forgiveness for us. But God loved us so much. 
And that's the reason we need to show our love to him. You know, if, you know, if you love someone, you will do all the things that are pleasing to that person. So can we show our love to God by, by spending more time in his presence, by reading his word? And let's show our love to God, because that's what the Bible commands his children. He say, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I'm, I'm just reminding, we all love God. That's the reason you have gathered here in, to this, in this Bible study. You love God, but I'm just there to just remind you one more time, just to motivate you, just to encourage you to love him more. And next, we're going to see another verse that talks about God's love. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. You know, how can we show that we love God? Jesus, he himself says in John chapter 14, verse 21, he says, hey, you know, my child, my child, if you want to show your love to me, that then you need to follow all my commands. You need to obey all my commands. You need to keep all my commands and that's the way you can show that you love me and Jesus also says the next line the one who loves me will be loved by my father see Jesus is reminding us he's telling us if you love me as God's own son even my heavenly father will love you and here he says in the last line, and I too will love them and show myself to them. You know, many times we, have, you know, we, we long to see Jesus. We long to see his miracle working power in our lives. And God is telling us, reminding us, if you love me and if you follow all my uh, and obey all my commandments and you keep all my commandments, then that's the way you can show that you love me. And the one who loves me, even my heavenly father will love you. And I too will love you. And I will show myself to you. That's, that's what God is reminding us this evening time, my friends. God is expecting us to love him so that he will rescue us from all the problems that we face in this world. And the second thing we see, because he knows my name, I will protect him. God is saying, he knows my name. My child knows my name. He knows who I am. He knows my power. He knows that my name is above all names. I'm exalted. My name is Jehovah Jireh. I'm the provider. My name is shepherd. I'm going to lead them by my precious hand. My name is Emmanuel. I'm the God who is always with them. My name is El Shaddai. I'm all powerful and I'm almighty. My name is omnipresent. I'm present everywhere. Wherever my child needs me, I'm there. My, my name is, uh, I am omnipotent. I'm all powerful. See, God is expecting us to know him better. To know who, who we worship a God who is so powerful, so mighty. And God is expecting us to know more about him, to know more about his character, to know more about his, you know, what all he can do for us in our lives. And God is saying, since my child knows my name, since my child has a desire to know me more, what I'm going to do? I'm going to protect my child. We all need God's protection, my friends, isn't it? And God is expecting us to know him better. And here we see in Psalm chapter 9, verse 10, we read, and those who know your name put their trust in you. This is what the psalmist is writing. He's saying, Lord, those your children who know your name will put their trust in you. They won't put their trust in their wealth that they possess. They won't put their trust in the money that they possess. They won't put their trust in their friends and in just in human beings. But they will put their trust in you because they know your name. How powerful is your name? And the psalmist goes on to say, For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. See, we all have gathered here to seek his face. 
to see what he wants to tell us this evening time. And here the psalmist is saying that God is a God who will never forsake those who come into his presence to seek him. My friends, let's try to know more about this name, which is above all other names. And John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, we read, Jesus said to the, to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Do you know what you mean by abiding in, the, in God's word? Just relying in on God's word, just spending time in God's word, just having a desire to read God's word and to know more about him. God is saying, if you... Just abide in my word. If you cling on to my word, if you have a passion to read my word and meditate on my word, that's the sign that you are truly my disciples. How can we show that we are the disciples of Jesus if we spend time more in his word? And then it goes on to say, and Jesus is saying, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. You know, my friends, if we know God's word so well, and the God's word is just the truth, and the truth will set us free from all kinds of bondages that are in our mind. You know, our mind says that it's not in it's not possible. The problems that you are going through, the struggles that you are going through is so big, it's not possible. The mind will tell us, the human mind will tell us, but the truth of God's of God's word will tell, will teach us you are worshiping a God who is a way maker, he's a miracle worker, and the truth that is found in God's word will set us free. So, my friends. The first thing that we saw was God is expecting us to love him. And the second thing that we, we see is God is expecting his children to know more about him. How can we know more about God? And, uh, you know, it's only by reading God's word. So that's, the, that's what it reminds us here. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So we need to know more about him. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. If we want to know more about the truth, Jesus, God, and we need to spend time in reading his word. Only if we read his word, we will get to know more about him. I know we are all reading God's word daily, but I'm just there to just remind you, just to motivate you to read his word more. And the third thing we're going to see, that's the last one. We're going to see, it says, he will call on me. My child will call on me and I will answer him. What a beautiful promise God is giving. I will answer to all the prayers of my children because they call on me. They don't go to any other place, but they just call on me. Whenever they need, they just call on me. They just depend on me. They just cry out to me. They just pour out what is there in their hearts to me. So I'm going to answer them. What a beautiful savior we have. How can we go and call on him? It's only by prayer. So I hope we are all spending more time in prayer. We know the importance of prayer. Okay, but I'm just there to remind you to pray more, to have this desire to spend more time in prayer. Just once a day is not enough. Try to make it a habit of just spending time in prayer all the every moment of your life, even everything that you do, each and every small, small decision that you take in your day. Just spend time in prayer. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go through this way. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Can you help me? Just let I need your strength. I need your power. I need your wisdom. I need the discernment to do the right thing, to choose the right, to make the right decision. Each and every moment you Try, you try to spend time in prayer with him and God is the, always there to answer the, the cry of his children. And here we see in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 we read, Bible says, God says that you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. See what God is promising. He's saying, you just call upon me, my child. You just come. 
close the door in your prayer closet, in your prayer room, in the place where you spend time in prayer, just come and pray to me and I will hear all your prayers and I will answer you. What a loving God we have. He's just asking us to come and pray and then he will hear and answer to all our prayers. From Philippians 4, 6, we read, do not be anxious about anything. You know, we all we all have so much of worry is going on in our mind. We can't go and share it with our friends. We can't go and share all our problems to our parents, to all our teachers, to all our mentors, to all our elders. But God is telling, reminding us, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, just by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Come to your prayer time and just Tell all the problems that you have. That's why in the beginning, uh, I just sang this song, give them all to Jesus. Bring all your problems, pack everything and just bring it at the feet of Jesus. Lay them down and he is always there to take care of you. So God is saying, bring all your problems, bring all your worries about the future that you have in your mind. Just bring it to me and there to answer to your prayers when you call on me. So my friends, God taught us three important lessons. The first thing that we saw was God is expecting his children to love him. And the second thing we see, God is expecting his children to have a desire to know more about him. And the third thing that we see is God is expecting his children to call upon him to cry out to him, to spend time in prayer with him. And he is always there to answer us. And we're going to see just a few more verses. And here we see the blessings of God, the blessing of his presence. He says, I will be with him in trouble. You know, what a beautiful blessing it is, isn't it? God's presence is always with us. He's saying, I will be with my child in trouble. The second one is the blessing of his protection. I will deliver my child. We need God's protection. And God is saying, I will deliver my child. And then we need God's promotion. God is saying, I will honor my child. My child will not be in this mediocre position. I will promote him. I will give him all the things that he needs. And I'm going to honor my child because my child depends on me. And then we see God is saying, I'm going to, I'm going to bring prosperity in the, in, the, in the life of my child. With long life, I'm going to satisfy my child. We all need satisfaction in life, peace of mind in life. You know, God is saying, I'm going to bless my child with prosperity. And then we see God is saying, I'm going to preserve my child. I'm going to protect my child. I'm going to preserve my child. He's saying, and I will show him my salvation. I'm going to save my child from all kinds of darkness. I'm going to save my child from all kinds of sin. I'm going to save my child from the, from the, from the schemes of the enemies. What a beautiful, you know, promises, blessings God has in store for his children. He's saying, I'm going to be with my child in trouble. I'm going to deliver my child. I'm going to honor my child. I'm going to satisfy my child. I'm going to show my child my salvation. So my friends, we've come to the end of this Bible study. Let's remind ourselves from these three verses. Because my child loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue my child. Do you love Jesus? Do you love God? And God is promising that he's going to rescue you from all your struggles that you're going through. I will protect my child because my child knows my name. Do you have a desire to know more about God? Do you have a desire to spend more time in prayer to know more about him? And God has a promise for you. If you have that desire, he's saying, I'm going to protect my child. And then we see God is saying, he will call on me. My child will call on me and I will answer my child. Are you going to spend more time in prayer to call on God? 
when God is promising, he's saying, I'm going to answer to all the prayers of my child. And then a few more blessings. God is, you know, giving us his thing. I will be with my child in trouble. I will deliver my child. I will honor my child. And I will satisfy my child with long life. And I will show my child my salvation. What a beautiful savior we have, young people. Try to spend more time in God's presence. Love him. Show your love to him by reading his word daily. Show your love to God by spending more time in his, in his presence in prayer. And God is always there to give you all these blessings that we see on the screen that, uh, that, we, that we read in these three verses. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Praise God, our Heavenly Father. We thank you and we praise you for this beautiful time of Bible study that you gave us, Lord. From these three verses from Psalm chapter 91, you spoke to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for who you are to us, Father. You are always there to protect us, to deliver us, to rescue us, Father. You're always there with us, Father. What a great blessing to have a loving Father being with us every moment of our life, Father. Lord, you have a desire for your children to love you more, Father. You have a desire for your children to know more about you, Father. Lord, you have a desire for your children to spend more time in prayer, Father. Lord, Father, we just bring all our problems, all our petitions to you at your feet, Father. Because you are a loving Heavenly Father. You care for us. You love us so much, Lord. I pray for all these young people who have gathered here. Bless them abundantly, Lord. Lord, you know all the problems that they are going through, Father. Be with them and bless them with your presence. And do all the miracles that they are waiting for from your hands, Father. We are, you are a way maker for them, Lord. You are a miracle worker for them, Father. Bless them abundantly, Lord. We, we commit all these dear children into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, friends, for joining us. Please do join us next month when I send the Zoom link to you and the invitation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.